bison and wild horses. Yes, we saw bison and wild horses while staying at Payne's Prairie State Park in Gainesville, Florida. Welcome back, guys. But if you're new to us, I'm Alice. And I am Larry. And we are Downsize and Make Sense Like the Penny. We went full time in our grand design mid-February with our two pups because we wanted to live life more deliberately. Now in this video, we're gonna show some of the awesome things you can do while staying here at Payne's Prairie State Park or if you're just visiting for the day. We chose this to be the first place that we landed after coming back from our Canada trip because we love those Florida State Parks. Yes, and this was a perfect location to go see our boys because they are in Gainesville, which is about 15 minutes away from this campground. And you have to see Larry's campground tour because you know those site by site tours are some of the best. This campground is actually pretty small. There's only about 50 sites, but they are beautiful in, a, in an oak hammocks. It is awesome. So I did a site by site tour showing you every site in the, in the campground and all the amenities you can expect at your campsite. Yeah, and while we were staying at this campground, we did a lot of things within the campground and close by. For instance, we went to the visitor center and right behind it was a 50 foot observation tower. And that's where we saw the bison and the wild horses twice, the two times we went there. And we did Bowling Bluff Trail, we did the La Chua Trail and some other things. So you're gonna have to stick around and see how amazing this place is. So we're also going to show you the day use area, which is actually where we are right now. We got this awesome lake behind us for boating. There's a boat ramp and a pier. You can see gators. <laughs> so stay tuned and see why we love Payne's Prairie State Park. Yes. Payne's Prairie State Park is located just north of the city of Gainesville. It's pretty easy to get to Payne's Prairie. It's really close to I-75. You just take the McCanopy exit here and the park is located right here on 441. You just come off of 441 and enter the park right here. It's only about a 15 minute drive on 441 right into the city of Gainesville. The entrance to Payne's Prairie is right here at the intersection of 441 and Savannah Boulevard. Get your Florida State Park Passport Book stamp at the ranger station. Payne's Prairie Preserve State Park is a 22,000 acre savanna in Alachua County, Florida. In 1970, it became the first state preserve in Florida. It was made a U.S. National Natural Landmark in 1974. Human occupation of this area dates back 12,000 years, but its current name comes from the 1700s when it became the stronghold of the Alachua Band of the Seminole Tribe, hence Alachua County, under their first chief, Ahaya. By the 1790s, the town had been relocated to a site east of Lake Wahlberg and became known as Payne's Town, named after Ohio's son, King Payne. Payne's Prairie is recognized as part of the Trail of Florida's Indian Heritage. You get to the visitor center and 50-foot observation tower through the main entrance all the way to the back. The observation tower is located off to the left. Start your visit of Payne's Prairie at the start, the Visitor Center. Make sure to explore the brand new interactive exhibits about park, wildlife, plants, and history, and learn more about the prairie story by viewing the film, A Level Green Plain, in the theater room. And the first panoramic views of Payne's Prairie through the large floor-to-ceiling windows. The observation tower is directly behind the visitor center. Sorry, can't bring Fido here. Climb the 50 foot observation tower to see a view of the prairie from the south rim and 
Nowhere else in Florida can visitors experience wild roaming bison and horses, but in Payne's Prairie. Historical records show that Plains bison occurred in small numbers in north central Florida for about 200 years. Ten Plains bison were reintroduced to the park in 1975 to help restore the area to its pre-European settler conditions. Bison can live 20 or 30 years and weigh over a ton. You can understand why the park advises you to stay at least 100 feet away, especially if you see an upraised tail which is often a sign of agitation. You may also see wild horses mingling with the bison or on their own. More about the wild horses on the Cones Dyke Trail. The Payne's Prairie Day Use Area is part of the main recreation area. You can either get there through a walkway in the campground or you can drive there from the main entrance and park in the large parking area. The recreation area includes an amphitheater, playground, pavilions, picnic area, grills, bathrooms, boat ramp, and fishing pier. You can access the day use or recreation area by a sidewalk in the campground, or there are two parking lots if you want to drive. Catch a beautiful sunset at this viewing deck overlooking the 300-acre Lake Wahlberg. Make sure to look for those curious and adorable river otters in the water along the sidewalk on the way to the pier. They are thin and sleek, about 38 to 47 inches in length and weigh about 10 to 20 pounds. They can swim 7 miles per hour but can move even faster on land up to 18 miles per hour. Their average lifespan in the wild is 16 years. They make chirping and grunting sounds or high-pitched squeals that can be heard over a mile away. For anglers, you may catch bass, bream, or speckled perch. A Florida freshwater fishing license is required but you can also catch some amazing sunsets. Past the pier further down the boardwalk is another day use area perfect for picnics and also sunsets with more views of Lake Wahlberg. Cones Dyke Trail begins just behind the visitor center to the right. You get there by the main park entrance all the way to the back. The Cones Dyke Trail is an eight mile round trip, sunny trail through the heart of the prairie marsh. The further you go, the better it gets. Diverse plant and wildlife viewing opportunities. starting on the Cones Dyke Trail this morning and it's a bit mushy, marshy. Good thing I'm wearing my hiking boots because this I'm sinking in pretty deep at the beginning here. And I'm hunting bison. Look carefully at the tall grass you don't know who might be watching you. Shortly down the trail, there they were. Not the bison I was looking for, but wild horses. Horses first arrived in this area brought by Spanish conquistadors in 1519. After the Spanish left in the early 1700s, Creek or Seminole Indians claimed the horses. And in 1863, Florida provided beef for the Confederate Army and used these horses to round up the cattle. In 1985, wild cracker horses, as they became known as, of Spanish descent were brought in 
and occasionally new stallions with Spanish blood continued to be brought in to preserve the cracker horse. Legislature adopted the Florida cracker horse as the official heritage horse of Florida in 2008. These horses can be 750 to 800 pounds. Though they are curious and appear friendly, the park advises distance of 100 feet, just like the bison. It appeared like this was a mother and her calf, plus possibly the father that made this adorable family. There was one lone black horse on the other side of this fence trying to get the attention of these horses. And there was this little doe casually walking among them as well. Where my hike ended, I received another great gift. This buck was very suspicious of me. I am so glad I brought my Zoom equipment. Due to high water levels on the Prairie Basin, portions of the Cones Dyke Trail were closed. The trailhead to the Bolden Bluff Trail is located right here off of 441, again just a short drive from the park entrance. It's a two and a half mile round trip, shady loop along the edge of a wooded slope. It descends to a sunny spur trail an observation tower with sweeping vistas. We had the boys come by from Gainesville for the day and some hiking. The first battle of the Second Seminole War in 1835 occurred near this spot, Bowen Bluff. In 1873, it was flooded and actually had steamboats and was referred to as Alachua Lake. The observation tower, as it was called, was much shorter than I expected. We didn't see any wild horses or bison, but we did see some birds and flowers and of course another view of the prairie. And again, due to high water levels, the trail was cut short. The Eco Passage Observation Platform is located right here off of 441, just a short drive from the main park entrance. It's the easiest way to experience the panoramic views of Payne's Prairie. After the Bowling Bluff Trail, we took the boys to the Eco Passage Boardwalk a short drive down the road. This spot has an amazing panoramic look at the Alachua Lake. But best of all was seeing this large gator who appeared to be napping right next to the boardwalk. The Lachua Trail is located at the north entrance of the park. Now you get to the north entrance from the main entrance, you take 441 over to 15th Street and at the end of 15th Street is the north entrance. The Lachua Trail is a three mile round trip, elevated boardwalk that winds around a Lachua sink leading to sunny grassy trail through the Basin March to the observation platform overlooking Alachua Lake.
First, you walk under the old railway trestle from 1882. 24 trains a day at its height passed here. This path under the trestle was built to move cattle. I'm on the Lachua Trail, which is three miles round trip. I'm hoping to see some wildlife um, while we're staying here at Payne's Prairie State Park Campground. And this looks like a pretty nice, easy trail for me to do all by myself, so. Next, you will see this building you will pass through. Spanish brought cattle over in the 1500s. This building is remnant of the largest ranch in Spanish Florida of the cattle days of 1600s, Hacienda de la Chua. In 1970, when the state of Florida purchased this area, 10 to 15,000 head of cattle were grazing, destroying the plains. Very few cattle, now known as cracker cattle or scrub cows, are allowed to remain and are managed in an effort to restore the plains. Then you reach this long boardwalk with a few covered areas to escape the blazing sun. This is the deepest of the Payne's Prairie sinkholes, a Latua sink, the basin's primary source of drainage. Sometimes it will fill like from 1871 to 1891 when the Alachua sink was temporarily blocked, which allowed for shallow draft steamboats on Alachua Lake in the center of the prairie. The park is a gateway site for the Great Florida Birding Trail, with over 300 species of birds seen on the preserve. This heron is snacking on the invasive apple snail that reached Payne's Prairie Preserve State Park after Hurricane Irma in 2017. Another special visitor that enjoys these snails is the snail kite. This bird was designated as both state and federally endangered with only 10 individuals counted in 1965. But in 2019, there were 104 of them recorded. Many give credit to the apple snail. In 1774, the area was visited by Philadelphian artist and naturalist, William Bartram, who wrote this about the alligators he saw. They are so abundant that if permitted by them, I could walk over any part of the basin and the river upon their heads, which slowly float and turn about like knotty chunks of logs of wood. We hope you enjoyed visiting Paynes Prairie State Park along with us. Now, check out our community page on YouTube for more up-to-date photos, and I try to put ones that you only see on the community page. And check out our Instagram because I put more pics and more videos there. Have you been to Paynes Prairie State Park? If you have, please share your experience with everybody in the comments. If you have any questions for us about what we did here at Paynes Prairie State Park, please drop that question in the comments. Now we do lots of content like this. We do campground tours, full-time RV living, RV DIY. If you like that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll leave a link down here. I'm also gonna leave a link to the campground tour that we did, the site-by-site -site tour, and I'll leave a link to that up here. And remember, downsizing still makes sense.